Exploring other worlds is the backbone of our favorite science fiction fantasies. While traveling about in space is fantastic, our heroes must eventually step off onto a new planet with fresh adventures. But is it as easy as it looks in the movies? Are you curious to know how exactly SpaceX and NASA are preparing for this interplanetary mission? Welcome to Future. Today, we'll be talking about how SpaceX and NASA plan to colonize Mars. Before we do, subscribe to our channel to get updated with everything on future technology, Elon Musk or SpaceX. Let's get started. We've had our eyes on the red planet for decades, and it's finally looking like now is the time to take that next giant leap and establish a human presence on the planet Mars. It won't be easy, obviously, and the challenges posed by a Martian settlement are staggering. The level of danger is terrifying, but the human innovations that are rising to meet these challenges are equally stunning. If we can't make Mars more like Earth, we'll have to bring Earth-like conditions to Mars. Fortunately, NASA has already made a start on that problem with a new experiment being carried out by the Perseverance rover called the Mars Oxygen in Situ Resource Utilization Experiment, or MOXIE for short. This has succeeded in converting a small amount of the carbon dioxide-rich atmosphere on Mars into oxygen. The present MOXIE unit is roughly the size of a toaster and separates oxygen atoms from carbon dioxide molecules using intense heat of around 800 degrees Celsius. We should live in cities under glass domes, which would be really cool and futuristic, and it's reasonable to think that we could create a microclimate within the dome with a pressurized atmosphere. But then we'd have to figure out a way to transport dome materials to Mars or set up a dome manufacturing facility on Mars. And even if we could build it, the dome would just get covered in dust and we'd end up in a big dusty dome. Colonizing Mars The idea comes from American architecture from the AI Space Factory, which won NASA's 3D printed habitat challenge with their idea to use Martian rocks as a building material for their egg-shaped habitat. Basalt could be mined from the surface, crushed, and mixed with a plant-based bioplastic to create a super strong and 3D printable material. A completely automated robot would lay down the concentric rings of rock and plant mixture, and the AI Space Factory is convinced that their material will solidify into a structure that is resistant to both cosmic radiation and extreme temperature. Therefore, they chose the egg shape for its structural efficiency. But any design for a building on Mars should have a sophisticated airlock system. So you can't just walk in and take off your helmet because of the massive differences in air pressure. And you'll also have to remember that you'll be covered in toxic dust. In reality, the best option for people on Mars is to live underground. Work on the surface will be best left to autonomous robots like the ones we've seen from Boston Dynamics. As a society, we've gotten pretty good at building underground tunnels, transport systems, bunkers, and all of that. We could just carry that over to a facility on Mars. Do you now understand why Musk is so invested in boring tunnels and developing Tesla bots? Regardless of which model we choose, there is still the human factor to overcome. We are talking about people living in very close quarters with each other for months and years, surrounded by hostile conditions with no way out, which sounds like a great environment for people to go insane, right? NASA is working on that one as well, though they are currently in the recruitment phase. The experiment will involve four people living and working on a 1700 square foot model of a Martian base. The 3D printed module will simulate the challenges of a mission on Mars, including resource limitations, equipment failures, communication delays, and other environmental stressors. They aren't looking for average Joes for this one. A master's degree in a STEM field is the minimum requirement, and NASA will monitor the experiment. The participants' physical and psychological impacts over the course of a year are assessed and analyzed, so we basically get to see if four geniuses can work together for the advancement of mankind or if they would start killing each other. In the year 2022, the experiment will begin. We'll need electricity, and while that's a hard one, solar has shown to be our best choice. So far, solar has been powering the series of Mars rovers that we've been experimenting with, but it's probably not the best power source. As we previously stated, a large enough dust storm can render solar panels useless, and the electrostatic nature of dust means that once covered, they're likely to stay that way until something intentionally cleans them off even if the dust isn't present. We'll still have problems with solar energy because Mars is further away from the Sun than Earth, which means there will be less energy available for tapping. This doesn't make solar energy impossible, but it does make it more complex. SpaceX Fortunately, we have Elon Musk on our side. 
Currently, they are world leaders in solar power generation and electric vehicle battery production. So it's possible that Elon will deliver the technology we'll need to make this happen. Solar panels require battery storage to manage the energy they collect. Therefore, this must be taken into account as well. With a weight of roughly 50,000 pounds and a length of 7 meters, the Mega Pack is large and heavy, but a couple of them could theoretically fit inside one SpaceX spaceship journey to Mars. Nuclear power on Mars could be a far less complicated answer to the electrical problem, albeit it does seem a little weird. NASA NASA has already begun working on its solution, the Project Kilopower. This is a compact, portable nuclear fission reactor capable of producing up to 10 kilowatts of power. Even at maximum, it's probably only enough to power a couple of household appliances, but each kilowatt reactor is rather modest. The reactor core is roughly one meter long. The entire device is around the size of a tall person, and they can be interconnected for increased output. NASA estimates that four of these generators will be enough to power one tiny outpost, and that may be built up there. They successfully tested this technology on Earth in 2018 and are now ready to launch it into space. NASA's next step is to use this system to power operations on the Moon within the next five years, with the intention of transporting the experiment to Mars after that. Okay, if that's the plan for life on Mars, when can we start again? The new Perseverance rover, which is approximately the size of a car, is the largest thing we've deployed to the planet so far. We need to send a lot more items before we can even think about sending people, since the transit window between Earth and Mars is so small that this won't be a quick trip. People will live there for at least two years at a time, which means they will need to create a base when they arrive. Food, water, and shelter are all things that must be thought out well before humans begin landing on the planet. Elon Musk is optimistic that he will be able to land his Starship vehicles on Mars by 2026, which is a great first step. Each ship is expected to have a cargo capacity of 100 metric tons. So in theory, we just need a few ships full of supplies to have anything to work with, but that raises further logistical issues, such as how do we unload the spacecraft? Can a small group of astronauts handle hundreds of tons of cargo packed into a half dozen spaceships? Most likely not, which takes us back to robotics. Robots must be the key to making any of this work, and that's why Tesla is working on their own labor robot, which should come as no surprise. We can almost predict with certainty that Mars missions in 2028 will be spearheaded by autonomous humanoid robots, setting the way for people to arrive in 2030 at a pre-established Martian colony. What are your thoughts on the possibility of human existence on Mars? Do you think these missions will be executed on schedule? Please share your ideas in the comments below. That's all for now. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get updated with everything on future technology, Elon Musk, or SpaceX. Thank you for watching and have a great day.